The following video you're about to watch may contain coarse language and mature subject matter, which may be inappropriate for all ages. Viewer discretion is advised. There's been a lot of development teams that have worked on Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic Team, Dimps, Traveler's Tales, Sanzaru Games, Big Red Button, BioWare. I mean, hearing some of those must bring back bad memories, right? I know it does for me. But you know what team never let me down whenever they touched the franchise? Sumo Digital. Spanning all the way back to when they did Sega Superstars Tennis, I always had a great time with whatever they released. Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing was fantastic. Transformed was a hell of a good time. Heck, I even liked Little Big Planet 3, a game where I can kinda play as Sonic or Dr. Eggman. So yeah, when Sega first teased the next racing game in the series, I crossed my fingers real hard, hoping that they'd be back to steer the ship. And lucky me, I got what I wanted when they announced Team Sonic Racing. Surprisingly, this game focuses entirely on Sonic the Hedgehog. Every other previous game I've looked at was a celebration of all things Sega. Games that let you play around with Jet Set Radio and Space Channel 5 and Shenmue. I can't believe Shenmue 3 is actually out. Motherfuck! Anywho, I thought that was a strange decision if only because it limits the game's broad appeal. This might be strange for my subscribers to hear, but there are lots of people who hate Sonic the Hedgehog. Something about that hedgehog rubs me the wrong way. And now we got another racing game that's dedicated only to this franchise. There were a few Sega purists who found that disappointing, but you are watching my Sonic retrospective, so of course I didn't care at all. It's a new racing game from Sumo Digital. I was excited, man. And I had a great time with it, even if it does have some flaws that take it a step down from All-Stars Transformed. And make no mistake, this is definitely a spiritual successor to the All-Star games. If you like those titles, you kinda know what you're getting when you jump into this one. So Team Sonic Racing goes back to the way things were in the original All-Stars game. This is purely a car racing game and does not feature boat or plane transformations. So. If you wanna fly high, I'm afraid you're gonna be disappointed. And without transformations, we also don't have lap transitions. We're in lap one, you're driving on the road, and then in lap two, you're sailing in the water because the bridge collapsed. Believe me, I thought that made Transform stand out so much as a kart racer. Because it made so many of the tracks dynamic and fresh when compared to their contemporaries. It was just cool that the racetracks themselves were kind of telling a story with its destruction or flooding or whatever. But I'm not going to hold it against Team Sonic Racing for going with a more traditional lap system. If the racetrack being the same every three laps is a negative, then I gotta go after Mario Kart 8 and Crash Team Racing as well. It's not super disappointing, but it is worth mentioning being the same developers and all. When it comes to how the cars handle though, fans of All-Stars will recognize so much. The cars still have those time boosts where the exhaust will shoot red, purple, and blue, depending on how long you drift. Obviously, the more you drift, the bigger the boost. Whenever you hit any kind of jump, you're encouraged to do tricks in the air because that will give you boost energy as well. And I'm so thankful that they brought back the flips that are tied to the right analog stick. You flick up, front flip. Flick back, back flip. You flick to the side and you will side roll and move the position of your car, which can help get you closer to the middle of the road if you're living a little too dangerously. 
There's just something that really pumps the adrenaline about flicking your characters every time you leave the road. But don't do it too much, otherwise you're gonna crash and lose some speed. That. The cars handle exactly like they did in Sonic Transform, which is a good thing in my opinion. The game of course has items scattered throughout the tracks to help you win the race, and since this game is entirely Sonic themed, that means the items come in the form of wisps. Hey, after Sonic Colors, they're here to stay, so you might as well use them appropriately. And they're not really that different from how these games used items in the past. Instead of snowballs, you shoot the Rocket Wisp at racers ahead of you. Instead of cone bombs, you drop the Cube Wisp behind you as an obstacle or to block incoming attacks. You need a burst of speed, you use the Boost Wisp. Want to attack everyone in first place? Instead of sending a whole bunch of Hornets, the Quake Wisp will spawn a whole bunch of Rock Pillars. And that may seem intimidating, but you can dodge them all, and when it happens, it is fucking sweet. Now all of this is sounding pretty standard, so now it's time to talk about what makes this game stand out. And it's all in the title. This isn't just a standard kart racing game. This is a game that actually pairs you up with two other racers, and you have to collectively win as a team. Hence, Team Sonic Racing. Oh yeah! This is a cooperative racing game. So we got a good bunch of characters from the franchise, 15 to be exact, and they're all broken up into five teams of three. You got Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles as Team Sonic, Shadow, Rouge, and Omega as Team Dark, Amy, Big, and some Chow for Team Rose, then you have the pairing of Blaze, Silver, and Vector the Crocodile, and finally the villains with Eggman, Metal Sonic, and Zabok of the Deadly Six. And yeah, some of these pairings are a little strange. Why are four Chow playable characters? Shouldn't Team Rose use Cream the Rabbit instead? Well, Cream could have gone well with the pairing of Silver and Blaze. She and Blaze are actually friends. Instead, Vector is there when he should be driving around with the other Chaotix, who aren't in this game. Having only 15 characters is definitely going to be disappointing for some, because there are so many Sonic characters you could use and the previous All-Stars games have all had at least 20 racers. But I would like to think that the reason the roster is so limited this time around is because every single character has tons of customizable car parts, which probably take a lot of time to design and balance for gameplay. Not to mention all of the dialogue that each character will say during the race. Unfortunately, that won't matter to a lot of people, as they'll just be wondering why they can't play as their fave Espio. But you know, I do want to say this. At least all of the characters are unlocked from the get-go. The game has unlockables, which I'll talk about later, but if I bring my copy of Team Sonic Racing to my friends to play the game on their Switch, at least I don't have to play for hours and hours so that they can play as Shadow or Blaze. Thank you. But yeah guys, we have five teams of three here, and in order to win races, you all have to do pretty well collectively. Like, just because you single-handedly got first place in the race, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to win. If your teammates are doing so badly that they finish in 10th or 12th place, you won't win enough points to actually score the victory. It tallies all three characters. So it's in your best interest to make sure that your teammates reach the head of the pack as well. And if you're wondering how to do that, that's where the team mechanics come into play. When the race is going, whichever member of your team is in the lead, they will be leaving behind a yellow slipstream. And if you drive into that slipstream, you will quickly find yourself acquiring boost energy to launch yourself forward through the track. In fact, if you boost next to a buddy, they will feel an after effect and boost along with you. And if that wasn't enough, you can actually pass your items along and give them to your teammates. Like in first place, you'll still find yourself picking up rockets and boost wisps, and yeah, you could hold on to them and protect yourself, but maybe your teammates aren't doing so hot. So why not pass along the rocket and give them a chance to shoot whoever's in front of them? They're the wealth, that's what I always say. And even if you choose not to give them items, you won't accidentally hurt your friends. There's no friendly fire. If you drop a cube wisp, they will not take damage from it. I can shoot rockets willy-nilly and never have to worry about taking out my own team. But ideally, you might want to pass along items anyway because it all goes towards filling your ultimate meter. Every single team action you do, whether it's entering someone's slipstream, boosting your friends, or giving them items, all fills a special meter that can give your team an invincible boost period. 
Sometimes it just takes filling up the meter at the last second to completely reverse your luck and win the race. These essentially replace the all-star moves and even play your character's theme song. Team Ultimate Team. Bring back the Chow Garden! Now, none of the characters have any unique bonuses with the Team Ultimate. Everyone does pretty much the exact same thing. But that's not to say that the racers don't have unique properties themselves. Oh no, Team Sonic Racing also classifies characters into three types. So we're going with the Sonic Heroes slash Sonic Riders system all over again. There are the speed types, like Sonic, who apparently let out a special field that can disrupt incoming projectiles. I'm not entirely sure how it works because I've hit speed types all the time with rockets and stuff, but that's what the tip section tells me, so hey. I like speed types because they're the only ones who can use the Burst Wisp, which produces a fire slipstream that damages anyone who touches it. Each class type has their own exclusive Wisp that they can use. Next are the Technique types, like Tails, who can actually drive on any kind of surface without slowing down. You see water? You can go over that. You want to head people off? Drive into the grass. You can totally ignore the road, and I love that. These are my preferred characters in the game, and go figure, Dr. Eggman's a technique type as well. Hey, I can't help that he's always the best character to play. And last are the power types like Knuckles. They plow through everything. Bad nicks, dining tables, ice chunks, nothing stops them. And for every obstacle they run through, they actually get a few rings, which increases your top speed. So if you see a bad Nick, run into it on purpose. It only helps. The only thing about power characters is that they can be awfully stiff when it comes to handling. But that's where the customization element comes into play. Every time you start playing the game, whether it's online or in the Grand Prix or whatever, you will collect credits. And these credits can be spent on Mod Pods in order to unlock more parts and accessories for your vehicle. And something I really appreciate is that it actually prioritizes the characters that you're using. So if I spent Adventure Mode playing as mostly Rouge the Bat, I will get way more Rouge parts than anything else when I start spending credits. And you never find duplicates either. It seems like every two or three credits you're always picking up a new car part and you're constantly getting new accessories. I really appreciate how convenient this is. You know, at a time when Mario Kart Tour and Crash Team Racing are nickel and diming the players with microtransactions, I appreciate that this game just gives you the content without any of the hassle. But I digress. The car parts basically serve the exact same function as Transforms mods, where maybe you like Shadow the Hedgehog, but you don't like how his handling is. Or maybe you want a stronger boost or a better top speed. By mixing and matching parts, you can make your favorite character play a lot closer to what you want. But this time, it actually changes the look of the car. You can change the front, the back, and the wheels. And with over 28 parts per character to customize the car to play exactly how you want, there's a lot of freedom there. But that's not all, because this game also lets you customize the colors of the car. With over 28 paint sets to choose from, you can completely change everything about how it looks. Like with Tails, his car starts off with an orange and white color scheme, which is okay, I guess, but I want Tails to feel more like Tails. So I change the car to blue and gold, and all of a sudden it looks like the Tornado 2, and it just feels so right. Maybe you're a fan of Sonic Drift. Sonic had a red car in that one. Boom! Now he's got a red car in this game. Remember Knuckles' orange Humvee? Boom! You can recreate that. But outside of emulating older cars, you can just get wacky with it. Make a vaporwave nightmare if you want. I personally think Shadow the Hedgehog looks great in pink. One of my favorite things about the game, when it did have an online community, was that I was always getting paired up with a whole bunch of players with custom cars. And it was just fun to see how creative everyone was online. I'd be seeing my team and I'd go, Ooh, look at that! I'm so boring in comparison. <laughs> I mean, my favorite color is red, and I want the Eggmobile to stay gray and yellow, so I'm pretty much fine with Eggman's default colors. 
You can also add decals and change the sound of the horn, but yeah, there's tons of customization, and it's really fun. So let's talk about the racetracks themselves. There are over 21 tracks to drive around in, and they are all broken up into sets of three, which all use one particular theme. Planet Wisp from Sonic Colors, Rooftop Run from Unleashed, a desert theme, an ice world that also has a volcano, Seaside Hill, Casino Park, and Eggman's Final Fortress. Unfortunately, those last three might look pretty familiar, and that's because Team Sonic Racing reused those nine tracks from the All-Stars games. You like that Eggman hologram? Well, back in the day, I was speeding past that thing with Ryo Hazuki. I was going through Whale Lagoon as my me on the Nintendo Wii. I went through Roulette Road once, and then twice, and now I'm doing it a third time. And yeah, I know that All-Stars Racing is nine years old at this point, and if you've never played the game, this doesn't really affect you. But I'm old, and I played the hell out of the original in 2010, when it came out after my Sonic retrospective started. Wait, I've been doing Sonic videos for nine years? It's almost been a decade? I- oh, oh god, oh no, I- oh god, oh no, oh god, I- But that being said, I really love all of the new tracks that were introduced. Sumo Digital is so good at building these really intricate backdrops to drive around in. Tracks that are filled with details you might not notice when you're speeding through it. With Planet Wisp, you find yourself going into tree trunks, dodging buzz saws, while all of the egg ponds are hard at work building Eggman's interstellar amusement park. The Mother Wisp actually shows up in the background, and I wasn't expecting to see her because she was only in the DS version. So that's a fun callback. You go into the pyramid, and King Boom Boo is there, flying around, being all mischievous, while you have to dodge the other ghosts who are trying to block all the racers with force fields. You go into the frozen junkyard, and there's this big giant Sonic Forces Death Egg robot that'll shoot lasers at you. There's a lot of fun stuff here, and I really like that the game was designed with this anti-gravity gimmick, where the cars can basically go upside down or ride sideways to drive beneath waterfalls or sprinkler systems. One of my favorite stages is Haunted Castle. It's basically Spagonia if the clock tower was haunted and filled with ghosts. There's this spectral road that circles around the tower, the pieces are all scattered so you can drive on the clock and stuff. You actually enter the building from the very top and you find yourself driving down through it while dodging cogs and stuff that are being moved back and forth. Then you reach the bottom, and it's in the aqueducts with tons of green sludge, and then you gotta dodge suits of armor that are trying to kill you with their axes, and oh my god, the music! soundtrack is amazing! I mean, first off, you have Crush 40 doing the main theme song, Green Light Ride, and boy do I love customizing cars to that music. But Jun Sonoy did a ton of original music here, and it sounds like Lost Sonic Adventure 2 music in the best possible way. I feel like Clockwork Pyramid should be played during a Tails mech level. But more than anything, I am hopeful for the future of this franchise because of the new blood who are brought in. T. Lopes, of Sonic Mania fame, did the Haunted Castle track. And with all the remixes he's done lately, I can't wait to see what he does next for the franchise. Hyper Potions! Their music was the best part about the Sonic Mania teaser trailers, and to hear them composing official Sonic music? Just mwah! I hope they stick with the series, I really do. And I gotta give special mention to Hitakuni Harita, who hasn't done too much musically for Sonic, but he composed my absolute favorite track in the game. I hope we see more from him as well. I 
I'd love to mention more music tracks, but we'd be here all day. It's like a perfect blending of old and new Sonic music, and it fits the game perfectly. You couldn't have asked them for much more. But yeah, back to what I was talking about, I like the racetracks. I like the flipping and dipping when I hit jumps. I like the obstacles I have to avoid. It's the sumo digital gameplay that I've always enjoyed. The only track I think goes on a little too long is Sky Road, mainly because it's a lot of long stretches that can take up to four or five minutes when you're playing on normal mode. Oh yeah, that really needs to be mentioned as well. If you want the game to be faster, play on harder difficulties. It's like Mario Kart. The game can feel dull when you're at 50cc, but when you bump it up, the tracks have a much better flow, they're way more intense, and that's when it's just super fun. I always play on expert mode whenever I'm killing time. The tracks are fun, the gameplay's fun, and if you care about the characters, it should be mentioned that this game has a story mode. Yeah, there's actually a plot this time, and it all centers around a new character known as Dodon Pa. An extremely wealthy Tanuki who has invited the entire Sonic cast to participate in his racing tournament. And yes, that includes princesses who live in other dimensions, and telekinetic hedgehogs who live 200 years in the future. He can literally teleport all the cars to whatever racetrack he wants, whether it's in Spagonia or a different planet entirely. He's very powerful. Our heroes don't quite know what to make of Dodon Pa. He may have given them some fancy cars, but for all they know, he could be working with Eggman. Just because somebody gives you something nice doesn't mean that they're nice. If Eggman offered me a cookie, I wouldn't eat it, because I'd be pretty sure that there was something wrong with the cookie. Eggman has cookies? Mmm, I want one. No big. Eggman doesn't have cookies. It was a metaphor. Is a metaphor a kind of cookie? I'm confused. We know big. We know. And this is how the cutscenes are presented. Still frames with full voice acting. Now some people might be wondering why I didn't do a let's play of this adventure mode. Well, that's because this is actually a pretty big piece of content. The difference between this and Sonic Riders was that Sonic Riders only really had like 12 races and a whole bunch of cutscenes in between. It's really quick. Adventure mode's gonna take you about four to five hours to go through and way more to complete. There are multiple races, Grand Prix, and minigame challenges to tackle. Games where you have to avoid traffic, where you have to collect as many rings as you can, where you have to slalom drift real close to the poles. It's a time-consuming thing with a lot of repeat racetracks that you'll see over and over again. And when it comes to the story, there's not much to say. It turns out Dodon Pa is not evil. He just wants to collect data from the races to design the greatest racing engine in the universe. And of course, Dr. Eggman wants to steal the engine for himself. But luckily, our heroes outrace him and manage to thwart his plans. The end. <laughs> That's not to say I find the story worthless. Far from it. I was glad to go through it just for the character interactions alone. I'm so gonna own you, Silver. Okay. No, you're supposed to say, in your dreams, Sonic. In your dreams, Sonic. Too late. The moment's passed. Something I actually like about this game is that the characters are constantly saying things during the race. And I know, that can be a disaster sometimes. You can always turn off the dialogue in the options menu, but as someone who likes these characters and likes hearing fun tidbits and exchanges, I actually got a big kick out of this. I'm banned from this place for counting cards. Some of these characters you rarely see anymore, and it's just fun to see what Shadow would say if he were to accidentally crash his car. How pissed off he'd be when the Chow take him out. And yeah, there are unique lines for each character's pairing. Everyone has something unique to say to every single racer. I'll remember that, Metal Sonic. You're not bad for a pilot. Oh, you. Metal Sonic. You're a bad piece of work, Metal Sonic. I mean, other than Metal Sonic. So much of the dialogue just made me laugh. Or raise an eyebrow. You're a bat. I've seen you fly. Dr. Eggman was so serious in Sonic Forces, he didn't really have any standout moments, no levity, no goofy shenanigans. In this game, though? Oh, he got to cut loose. No. Sorry, babe. Not sorry. I will outrun you all! <laughs> this 
So yeah guys, that's basically Team Sonic Racing. You also have stuff like the time trials where you can compare your times with everyone online. And it turns out all the best players are using Zavok. I guess he has the best top speed or boost or something. If I had a nickel for every time someone asked, why is Zavok in this game? <laughs> they don't even explain why he's helping Eggman. He just is for some reason. Seems a little out of character. If only we had a villain that was established in the last game. Oh, and if you don't like the team mechanics, you can actually compete in singles races, both offline with their own dedicated Grand Prix, as well as online with real players, but, uh... Ooh boy, good luck trying to do that. Yeah, now I gotta talk about the elephant in the room. Despite this game not even being a year old, nobody's playing this thing. It's just dead. I tried playing this game with strangers, and I would find myself waiting 10 minutes for no one to show up. This game is a ghost town right now, and I think I know why that is. The lobby system sucks. It just sucks, and it's a major step down from what they used for Sonic Transformed. Because back in the last game, whenever you were racing around, other people could find the lobbies that you were in and join mid-race. When you joined a lobby, the game would tell you that the racers were racing, and all you had to do was wait for them to be finished so that you could join them in the next race. Simple! Whoever was playing the game could be found. And Team Sonic Racing screwed that up. If you're in a race, your lobby disappears. It's just gone. I have never found people who are in the middle of a race, and I never saw anyone join me until after the race was finished. Which, by the way, the window to find someone after they finish is 60 seconds. Even when nobody says they're ready, the game just says, Nah, you are ready. And then we're off. Like, when I'm in a group and I have to literally DM my friend to tell them, Okay, my race is finished. Join now. Join now. You fucked up. Like, that is a huge oversight. If I wanted to play the team races with bots, I'd play Grand Prix mode. I go online because I want to be paired with actual human beings. Because that's when the game is at its best. When you're playing with 11 other real people. All of a sudden the teamwork is off the charts and the thrill and excitement is multiplied threefold. With a game so centered around teamwork, two people are not going to cut it. So to screw up the online as badly as you did? Just wow man. That's disappointing. I did manage to get some games going on both the PlayStation 4 and the Nintendo Switch, and I want to thank my community for that one. I asked on Twitter if anyone wanted to play this weekend, and my friends actually showed up. I won? I mean, of course I won! It's a shame very few people will have that experience. You know, the game's not even a year old, maybe they will patch and fix the online, I don't know. But right now, I can't recommend that aspect of the game. The soundtrack is phenomenal, the character interactions are so fun, the tracks are great to race around in, the customization is fantastic, I still like my Sumo Digital Karting. But it's still a step down from the last game. If you wanted more than 15 characters, or a better online system, this is probably a game you can skip out on. But I still liked it. I had a fun time and there was lots to gush about, hence why this video is as long as it is. <laughs> this is a game I still come back to every now and then to blow off Steam in the Grand Prix modes. So hey, if you ask me, Team Sonic Racing gets the recommendation. If all of this sounded like fun, you should definitely give it a shot. Coming up last in the Sonic... <coughs> Excuse me. Coming up next in the Sonic Retrospective, we're joining the Mario Brothers as it's that time once again to compete for some gold. Next up, Mario and Sonic at the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games.